Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Pigskin Addicts. Back again with another video. So, as you guys probably heard the news yesterday, the Chargers have a new defensive coordinator, uh, Derek Ainsley. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, but he's somebody who was on the staff. Um, so, this is a internal promotion. Uh, normally, these type of promotions are the best when it comes to, you know, having to fill a role, uh, you know, especially very quickly, right? It's, it's kind of late. The transactional period to go out and hire a new defensive coordinator so uh i think Derek ainsley is going to make a pretty good uh defensive coordinator uh so i wanted to kind of get into his background a little bit before i give uh my thoughts and opinions on this so Derek ainsley he started uh his playing career at troy university of troy i think 01 to 05 uh he then moved to coaching um small school a d3 school i can't remember the name of it. i think it's huntington or something like that uh so he stayed there for about three or four years his big career move though came in 2010 as a graduate assistant with alabama so you know obviously nick saban being there it, you know with the the crimson tide right he kind of is the coach whisperer um you know he brings in a bunch of coaches and a lot of guys get hired in you know head coaching positions offensive coordinator defensive coordinator positions right he's the guy that you want to go to right if you're a coach and you need to work on some things that's the place you want to be so you know he was able to get on there in 2010 as a graduate assistant now from there he kind of ran the sec circuit a little bit uh he went to tennessee kentucky um and those positions were as defensive back coach uh you know so he has a specialty right as, as a db's coach uh you know he did the sec circuit then he went back to bama in 2016 as the uh, defensive back coach there and uh while he was there he got to coach Mika fitzpatrick uh marlon humphrey right some guys of of note in the nfl uh they obviously won the the uh, uh college football playoff uh that year as well too so you know he has that to add to his resume as well now from there he uh was Recruited by the Raiders in uh, 2018. So he ended up taking the job with the Raiders. I thought it was interesting, interesting little note that he became the highest paid defensive back coach in the league, right? So guys who are, you know, well thought of, right? They normally get those types of opportunities. So Derek Ainsley has been a guy, he's been well thought of in the league. And, uh, you know, just doing my research on this video, a lot of people really see him as a defensive type of coach right a modern defensive type of coach uh, a guy who is going to have his bite at the apple you know uh it's expected right within the next two to three years he'll have his bite at the apple at you know either a a premium defensive coordinator position where he's actually you know really able to be a defensive coordinator or possibly even a head coaching position but you know i think he is on his way right he's he's kind of worked his way up the coaching circuit um people are talking about him right he's well thought of you know he's he's thought to be a very smart very innovative coach and he has a specialty when it comes to working with dbs right and i think at this point right now in the nfl where it is right modern nfl pass happy league that is a premium, right? To have a coach who can come in and get all of your DBs better, right? All of your DBs, you know, all you know, pretty much on the same page, you know, technique wise and things like that, right? Being able to play and uh, you know hold your water against some of the best receivers in the league, I think that holds a lot of weight with a lot of teams. So I think that's why he's thought of as you know the next you know kind of uh, superstar uh, defensive coach. Now his most recent defensive coordinator. Um, Positional experience came at the college level uh, with Tennessee in 2020. Now, he improved the Tennessee defense, right? Tennessee defense, 2019, uh, you know, even before then, right? They weren't all that great. They were ranked 77. Uh, before he came in, he improved that defense from 77th in total defense to 23rd when he was there in 2020. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, but they had some some stuff going on there uh, at Tennessee, pay for play type of scandal. Um, this was all before the 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 big payments and stuff in college football were were okay, right? Before everything got green lit, so he wasn't brought back because of it. Um, it sucks now. I bet they wish that he, they can bring somebody like him back uh, because now you can. Can just go anywhere right the transfer portal is open you can do whatever you want to do players are getting paid ridiculous amounts of money in college right through the uh name image and likeness thing so 
that was probably a mistake, probably an oversight on their part. But I'm glad that he's with the Chargers at this point right now. We get to have a defensive mind like this step into the position. And, you know, he has a lot of experience, a lot of great experience. And the one thing that you can say about him is that everywhere he has went, they have improved, right? The defense has improved. Defensive backs have improved even in 2018 with the Raiders, right? He improved the Raiders defense, right? They were able to get, I think, what, 10 more interceptions than they did the, the previous season, right? So, they got better on the back end. Everywhere he goes, he improves, uh, you know, the team, right? The the defense, the DBs, whatever, right? So he is a guy he's known for, you know, having that impact everywhere he goes. Now, this is going to be a very, very great move uh, on paper for the Chargers. It's a great move for Brandon Staley on paper. Now, going through all of that stuff, right? A lot of, of good stuff on this list, right? A lot of um, impressive numbers, right? A lot of experience, right? This is all valuable. But... <laughs> At this point right now, if we're going to be honest, this means absolutely nothing. It means absolutely nothing because the Chargers defense is Brandon Staley's defense. And that's what we have seen the past two years. And I don't expect anything to change. This is going to be Brandon Staley's defense, right? Good or bad, this is going to be his defense. Uh, he has shown that he is in control of this defense, right? He has not given up play calling duties uh, in his first two years. And again, I don't expect him to give up any play calling duties going forward. Now, would it be beneficial if he did? I think it would. I definitely think it would. I think it would be beneficial if he was able to give up some play calling duties and see what Derek Ainsley is, you know, capable of. He's obviously shown that he is capable of coaching at a very high level, at the college level, right? At the SEC, right? That's best athletes, uh, you know, the most NFL players, you know, every year come out from SEC schools. So, you know, it's not like he's coaching in D3, right? He's shown that he can do it. At the highest level in college football, he's shown that he can improve a defensive backfield in the NFL. You know, he did it in 2018. So I think this guy is ready to call plays, right, if that was going to be the role for him. But unfortunately, I just don't think that is it's going to be reality, right? He's not going to be able to call plays. Um, now, as far as game planning goes, as far as him looking at the game differently, I think he can bring some different things to the defensive uh, 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 room, right, than, than Ronaldo Hill. But... Again, he's only going to have so much say. He's only going to have so much power. This thing is for Brandon Staley. This is a Brandon Staley thing, win or lose. Now, the one thing that Derek Ainsley has uh, as leverage is that he cannot be blamed for the Chargers defense being bad in 2023. If the Chargers defense continues to trend the way it has, it has been trending uh, the past couple of seasons, Derek Ainsley is not going to be to blame. Um, this is going to be, again, this is going to be a Brandon Staley thing. When Derek Ainsley is in charge of a defense, they get better. And that's what, you know, his, his resume shows they get better. Uh, so if this charger defense does not get better, he cannot be, you know, scapegoated for this, uh, uh, you know, type of failure. Right now, I think the other important part of this entire story, right? This, um, Ronaldo Hill going to, uh, uh, work with Vic Fangio, uh, in Miami. This this has a layer of uh, mystery around it, I guess you can say. Some people are calling it a soft firing, but to me, it doesn't make sense. The timing of it doesn't make sense. A soft firing, you know, right before you get to free agency, right? Right, right before you, you, you know, start looking at draft stuff, right? Joe Lombardi got fired, what was it, last month, right? He got fired last month immediately after 27-point debacle uh, of a blown lead. Uh, against Jacksonville. That's when Joe Lombardi and Shane Day were fired. So if Ronaldo Hill was going to be fired, I think it would have been around that time. So I don't think that he was fired. I think Ronaldo Hill took the job in Miami because he wanted to go work with Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio signed a pretty damn good contract for a defensive coordinator. Um, he is going to have a lot of power in the building, right? He's going to be a, a, a very major voice uh, for them. He has a lot of money, you know, thrown at him as a defensive coordinator. Uh, so that's not going to be something that Miami is just going to, you know, think about and just say, hey, you know, we're going to let him go after one year or whatever. Vic Fangio is going to be there for pretty much all four years, I, 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 would, I would say. Um, and I think he's going to improve that Dolphin defense as well. So I think Ronaldo Hill, I think he made the smart move. By jumping, you know, across the country to go work with Vic Fangio. I think his job security is far more, far more um, important, right, than him working with Brandon Staley for another year. 
maybe not even making it throughout the entire year, right? And I think that's something that he looked at. If this thing goes bad, if if things go awry, if there's a couple more injuries on defense or whatever, right, those guys are not going to make it through the season. Uh, they're going to be unemployed, you know, when the season is still going. And I think Ronaldo Hill looked at that. So I don't think that it was a soft firing. I think Ronaldo Hill went into self-preservation mode. And I don't know what him and, and Staley's relationship is like. I'm not even going to speculate, right? I don't, I don't want to you know, put out things that are not true, right? But to me, it just seems like a self-preservation type of thing. Ronaldo Hill is going to have a job uh, next year, right? So we don't we don't know that. We wouldn't know that if he was going to be the defensive coordinator coming into this year. We wouldn't know if he would have a job or not. So to me, it's a very smart move on his part. But again, back to Derek Ainsley, him being the new defensive coordinator, this is great for him. This is a great, great move for him because, again, if things go bad, you got to look at him. You got to look at Kellen Moore. You got to look at these young guys who, you know, they're young, right? As far as age goes, they're young as far as, you know, not having, you know, a super long, extensive NFL coaching history. But they have enough experience to know and to show that they know what they're doing on both ends, right? So if you look at a situation where, Brandon Staley is not living up to expectation in 2023, right? You can look at one of these guys to potentially be the interim head coach in the middle of the season. I don't know. Whenever it would happen, right? If things were not to go well, that could be a very probable situation. Both of these guys have shown that they know what they're doing. They've shown that they can get their sides of the ball right. Uh, that's something that Brandon Staley has not been able to do in two years as the Chargers head coach. So to me, I'm really looking at this thing from a holistic standpoint, and I'm saying, damn, um, which one of these guys is going to be the next interim head coach of the, the Los Angeles Chargers, Kellen Moore or Derek Ainsley? We don't know. And if one of them was, you know, to get the permanent head coaching job, right, it's a good chance that they would retain each other, one another, right, We retain each other's services. So to me, I, th this is kind of a... a a setup move it, it, it seems like for the Chargers and I like it because I like this guy's history I like his resume I like what he's been able to do and I like that he has improved everywhere that he has went right they get better when he shows up every team that he's with get, gets better when he shows up so I like that I really really like that um, I obviously like the the higher end of Kellen Moore as well too so this is going to be one of those situations to watch very diligently throughout the season, right? To see if there's any inkling of, of Brandon Staley, you know, being canned. Can you get one of these guys, right? Because both of these guys know what they're doing. It's just, it, it, it really is a toss up for me. So I, that's my takeaway from this is which one of these guys is really going to show that they can take Brandon Staley's spot because that's, that's kind of what it's shaping up to be like. Uh, there's a lot of youth on these uh, this, this coaching staff for the Chargers, uh, both sides of the ball. So um, I'm interested to see what this season is going to be like. This is going to be a season of interest for me. Um, you know, I'm, I, I don't really have all that many expectations, uh, you know, per se. I got to see how the roster shakes out and how things go in the draft and free agency and things like that. But as far as the coaching staff goes, this is a very, very interesting, very, very interesting uh, 2023 season. It's going to be very, very interesting. I'm, I, I can't wait to watch. I really can't. Um, but that is all I got for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Really appreciate it. Shout out to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And uh, don't forget to smash that like button on your way out as well, too. Uh, I'll be back all week with more content. So uh, bear with me. Uh, take a few days off to hang out with the family and whatnot. So um, I'm going to be getting into some draft stuff here. We're going to be kicking it into overdrive um, as we get into March and as we start looking at more prospects and things like that. Uh, free agency will be around the corner as well, too. So going to start picking things back up here on the channel. Thank you guys for hanging with me so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and that's all I got for this one, guys. So until next time.